22-year-old university student Sunio Suzukawa is majoring in marine biology. He has a part-time job at Ocean Stage, a dive shop. There, he forms bonds with Hayato and Mai, two co-workers. After a lecture, he is on his way home when he sees a young paraplegic woman racing toward him in her wheelchair. He saves her when she falls off the wheelchair. Grandma of the girl refers to her as Kumiko. In appreciation, Kumiko's grandmother extends a dinner invitation to Sunio at her home. He meets a stray cat there and the grandma cooks dinner for him when they get to her house. Kumiko is extremely impolite to Sunio and requests that he call her Jose rather than Kumiko. For him, Jose's grandmother prepares takoyaki. During dinner, Sunio talks to grandma about his life and how he's working harder than usual to save money. He receives a job offer from Jose's grandmother, Chizu, to look after Jose just as he is about to head for his apartment. The following morning at Ocean Stage, he informs his co-workers and boss of a new job offer and lets them know that he is currently saving money to travel to Mexico for studies the following year. Kumiko calls Sunio an intruder when he visits her home and she is hostile to him. She then locks herself in her room and orders him to perform irrational tasks, such as prolonged kneeling, because she wants to understand for how a human can kneel. She also instructs him to locate ten four-leaf clovers for her. Jose believes that ten four-leaf clovers can fulfill wishes. Sunio is incredibly upset with her treatment of him, and he vents his frustrations to his friends. She's like those annoying jellyfish, he says. Sunio decides to leave the caretaker position after feeling defeated by the job. The professor at his university tells him the following day that the professor at a university in Mexico would really like him to study there because his thesis was quite impressive. To get the scholarship, he promises the professor that he'll work hard and try his best while learning Spanish. The next day, just as he is about to resign, he discovers that Jose has gone missing. He storms into her room and discovers numerous paintings of the sea and fish everywhere. Sunio realizes Jose wants to see the sea when he finally locates her close to a railroad crossing. Therefore, he drives her to the train station so therefore drives her to the train station so that they can board a train and travel to see the ocean. Jose is saddened by how many rude and unhelpful people she encounters. She becomes very excited to look out the window at the scenery when they board the train and she sees an airplane for the first time. She explains to him that she wants to taste the seawater when they get to the seashore. She explains to him that she has only read in books that seawater is salty and that she wants to find out for herself. She also tells him the incident from her childhood about how one day she asked her father about the taste of sea. Sunio carries her in his arms and swings her around in a playful manner to help her taste the sea water, they had a great time together. When they return home, Jose's grandmother chastises Sunio for taking her to the sea. Jose informs Sunio that he works at a diving shop and occasionally goes scuba diving. Jose then informs him that her grandmother takes a nap from 1 to 3 p.m. every day and that they can sneak out to go to various locations. Following this incident, Jose and Sunio travel to many places together. On a trip to the library, Jose meets Kana, the librarian, who is also a fan of Sagan. It's Jose's first time borrowing a book from the library, and she makes a new friend while she's there. Sunio then takes her to his workplace to show her around. There, everyone is talking about the ocean and the fish, which makes Jose sad because she can't see it for herself and she leaves abruptly, saying that she shouldn't go to places like this. When she returns home, she asks her grandmother to inform Sunio that he is no longer welcome. Sunio receives word that he has won the scholarship while at his diving job. Meanwhile, Jose tries to read books to children at the library, which bores them. Her drawing, on the other hand, appeals to them. She gradually comes to realize that she wants to be an illustrator. Sunio pays Jose a visit when she returns home and presents her with a lamp made of Claren angelfish. 
He tells her that this species of fish can only be found in Mexico and that it's his dream to see a school of clarion angelfish and swing among them. He also tells her that when he was a kid, an aquarium near his house had this one fish, and he used to stare at it for an hour every day after school. He tells her that the lone fish reminded him of himself because his parents were divorced and had no time for him. For a brief moment, they share a cute moment that happens before a kiss but Jose quickly snaps out of it before they could exchange a kiss. The next day, Jose and Sunio go to visit a zoo. When Jose sees the tiger, she tells Sunio that she wanted to witness the scariest animal at the zoo by his side. Upon being asked the reason, Jose says that if she gets scared she can cling to Sunio's arm and can depend on him. She tells Sunio that she read the book to the children at the library and how she drew the mermaid's castle. She tells him that this the reason, behind her decision to publish her artwork and pursue a career as an illustrator. Sadly, Jose's grandmother passes away soon after. Jose is asked by a social worker to give up on her dream and work as an office worker because she has little money left over to survive on and she has no one who'll look after her. Sunio, who was awarded a scholarship from a university in Mexico, will depart soon. Despite his promising future, he continues to worry a lot about Jose's situation. My, Sunio's co-worker at a diving shop, goes to see Jose and urges Jose to release Sunio out of concern for him. She also tells Jose that Sunio is acting sympathetically toward her in everything he does. When Sunio visits Jose the following day, he discovers that she has thrown all of her artwork in the trash and is giving up on her dreams. She then requests that they say goodbye by going to the sea together. When they are close to the ocean, Jose breaks down in tears and informs Sunio that she will no longer be paying him, and that this will be his last job. Jose asks Sunio to call her Kumiko rather than Jose despite his assurances that he doesn't do anything for money. Jose leaves Sunio behind as it begins to rain after she has grown extremely depressed and discouraged. Jose is nevertheless trapped in the middle of a road. Sunio rushes to her in an attempt to save her but is struck by a car. Jose is unable to help him and she collapses in the middle of the road as well. Then a lady who had stopped by to offer assistance saves both of them and drives them to the hospital. When Sunio awakens in the hospital, Jose is the first person he asks for. He is informed by the nurse that she is fine and has been sent home for the day. Sunio is then discovered to have a foot bone fracture and he is informed that he might not be able to dive or even walk normally again. The doctor also tells him that it will be at least another two months before his ankle can support his entire weight. Additionally, he may develop osteoarthritis, it is said. He is instructed to use a wheelchair for the time being. Sunio is devastated by the news and decides to give up on both his rehabilitation and his desire to visit Mexico to see clarion angelfish. Sunio is absolutely heartbroken when Mai takes him for a walk, and when Mai expresses her feelings to him, he doesn't respond. Once Mai has located Jose, she informs her of Sunio's predicament and asks her to prove her feelings for him. Then Jose creates an illustration book that subtly tells Sunio and her story, with the main character standing in for Sunio realizing his dream. She then requests that Hayato, a different employee from the diving shop, take Sunio to the library so that Jose can read the book to the kids there. Sunio, moved by the narrative, finds his spirit and dream again and actively pursues rehabilitation. Jose has gone missing on the day Sunio is to be discharged from the hospital. Sunio, concerned, visits numerous locations and eventually begins running despite his injury. After a lengthy search, he discovers Jose's wheelchair tracks at the zoo, facing the tiger, and on the road that had previously frightened her. While Sunio is still looking for Jose, someone inadvertently pushes Jose's wheelchair, and she is thrown from the wheelchair into Sunio's arms, just as they did the first time they met. Sunio and Jose kiss and confess their love to each other as they meet. During the credits Sunio travels to Mexico to further his studies. Jose runs into Sunio again during Sunio's spring break, 
this time under a fully bloomed cherry blossom tree.